Hey, this is Lucas. Uh, got another lathe to take a look at here today. It's a Pratsy lathe. It's a nice little lathe that's actually made in East Germany when it was in East Germany. It's got to be a few years old. Uh, it says, uh, we're going to look at it here. I guess we should uh, take a little zoom in here. But uh, it says uh, made in German Democratic Republic. And uh, so we know it's East German. And uh, it's actually a model. It's uh, SD300, and it, it refers to this model number in most of the manual, but then it also refers to uh, SD65 within this, uh, within this manual as well towards the end. So, uh, or sorry, MD65, MD. So uh, it's either an SD300 or an MD65. So it, uh, this lathe will come with uh, lots of accessories. It's almost complete. Uh, the manual, it's got uh, three jaw chuck, the chuck key. It's got the outer jaws for the three jaw, so it's got, you know, inside and outside jaws. It's got the full complement of change gears. It's got the tail stock with an extra Tommy bar, its wrench, a live center, a dead center, live center and a dead center for the tail stock, which is a uh, Morse taper one. Uh, as, well, as well as uh, this is also more staple one. It all fits in here. Uh, a couple of hand tools. So it's got these two, uh, actually three wrenches, three open-ended wrenches, a screwdriver, a couple of Allen wrenches. And then uh, we've got some actual cutting bits, a nice little box of them. They're both quarter inch and, uh, oh, I think they're three-eighths. Uh, not certain what these are for. It looks like a little, just a little box of miscellaneous bolts and washers. There's only a uh, two bolts and maybe three washers in there and a couple of lathe uh, tool holders one of one of which is a uh, uh, this would be a right tool holder call that a right hand it's an Armstrong it's a uh, 000 R and also it's got this uh, 2037 cutting tool holder and this one's a craftsman so it's got all these uh, nice little tool holders with it it also has this is, uh, I think, rather neat accessory, and that's this angle block, and the angle block is on it right now. I'm going to show it set up for milling, but uh, I, I, it does not have the vise. I'm going to call. Uh, there is this uh, international sales and marketing group out of uh, Huntington Beach, California, and I believe they're still in business because I did find a website that looks like it was current for them. So I'm going to call and find out how much the vise will run for this. We'll, we'll see. I do have a nice little Morse Taper 2 uh, mill bit in here, and uh, this is uh, Morse Taper 2 in the headstock, so this is perfect for this uh, application. But first, I'm just going to show it set up for milling, and then we'll go over the, uh, or we'll show it set up for milling. So the lathe uh, does have a reversible motor on it, and right now it's set up to cut this way, so we're going to just flip it out. And uh, one would then manipulate the uh, the z-axis uh, this way and then the uh, x and y would be these two and one would have a, a workpiece then bolted up or in a uh, milling vise right here so uh, z would be away from and towards the spindle uh, x if it were similar to a regular mill would be this way and then this would be the y I'm going to shut this off. I'm just going to show that it does run in reverse as well. You do have to have it off when you uh, reverse it. That's in the reverse mode. So I'm actually going to take this block out for the next scene, and we'll just show the uh, we'll just show uh, this plate, uh, this uh, compound slide mounted where it normally would be, with the rest of the uh, tool holder here, which goes on the compound. Okay. So uh, here's another aspect of the lathe that I just wanted to mention. It's got a, a permanently mounted, uh, you know, the spindles in, in the headstock, obviously. That can be taken out, but, but this flange is actually part of the spindle. It's not separable from the spindle. And in one respect, it's kind of like the, the D1 type of spindle, uh, where you've got three uh, pins that pull, pull the chuck up against that flange. Uh, that, that is ordinarily done with, you know, three cams. 
Uh, that's why that's called a camlock. This one has three uh, threaded studs that then uh, engage in these holes, and that's what uh, ends up pulling the uh, the chuck up to the uh, up to the flange. So uh, I just wanted to point out that it's not a threaded type mount. So actually, it's safer if you're going to put it in reverse. Uh, although a chuck this small, probably not a real issue of safety, but you don't want to bang up the ways if the chuck were to come off. So that's the type of uh, uh, mount that the uh, the chuck has. So you use these small uh, you know washer and nut behind this and we'll draw it up okay all right here we got her set up now a piece of delrin anyway uh we're going to engage the uh it's got a clutch right here to engage the feed and uh we'll uh we'll do that i'm going to bring it back a little way so we can actually see this handle turn you have to lift this up and then turn it over and it engages and now We can see it cut, cuts like a champ. I haven't tried aluminum yet or any other metal. Now I'm just going to disengage this and we'll see how quickly the, uh, the feed kicks down. Stops right now. So the, uh, the threading is set up so that uh, it'll do threads per inch. And that goes anywhere from, uh, oh, let's see, what's the low end? Looks like 11 to uh, 24. It'll do modular from uh, 0.1 to 0.6. And it'll do the metric from 0.2 to 3. And then uh, in order to, you know, to use these, you have to actually change out these gears according to the schedule right here. Lifting. Looking in. Just cutting. It's got uh, you know two pulley system for reducing the speed or changing the speed. And right now it's on the uh, lowest speed from uh, motor to this intermediate shaft, and then there'll be a relatively low speed. It's the second slowest speed to the spindle, so uh, it's actually uh, it could actually go one step slower, and then oh about uh, two steps faster. It looks like uh, well this would have to stay here, this would have to go on there. So. Yeah, maybe uh, one step slower, or one step faster from where it's at. And in order to uh, switch out the change gears, you uh, have to change this banjo. It looks like there's two bolts here that have to be uh, slacking this nut probably in that one uh, to get at the change gears and then swap them out for these guys. And I believe that's the full complement. The, uh, the manual shows nine change gears for this, and there are nine on that, uh, on that string. Okay, here we're going to cut a piece of aluminum. Uh, I've got the spindle speed set at 1200 RPM. I should point out too, it's got a four speed spindle. I'll uh, go over that in a little bit here, but uh, three, six, uh, 300, 600, 1200, 2400 RPM. I'm going to fire it up. cut a piece of aluminum now. Uh, this is about six tenths of an inch in diameter and uh, we're going to take it down about uh, the diameter is 0.63 and the new diameter is uh, I just zeroed it out so it's uh, actually about, uh, we took about 30 thousandths off the radius, uh, 30, 63 thousandths off the diameter. So, uh, boy, it works great. Uh, the little Pratsy lathe here. It's got four spindle speeds, 300, 600, 1200, 2400. And uh, it depends on how you set up the belts. Uh, there's two belts. So it'll go down as low as 300 and up as high as 2400 RPM.